Hi, seventh grade. This video is to get you started on your knife skills, which you will be practicing this week and hopefully every week through the rest of the quarter. So you can see my cutting board here and I have a few knives, a peeler and a big clean russet potato. Um, first to talk about the knives. These are all chef's knives. Chef's knives are the most universally helpful tool in your kitchen. Um, they come in all different sizes. You can see this is a very large one, but it's also really sharp and an antique. Here's kind of a more basic size and a little bit smaller one. You may have to look around your kitchen to find a knife that you are comfortable with using. And don't be afraid of a sharp knife. We need to practice safe knife handling, but a sharp knife is actually safer than a dull knife because when you have a dull knife, you might try to put a whole lot of extra effort and really like struggle when you're cutting and that might actually cause you to cut yourself more than a sharp knife would that just glides easily for your food. So I'm gonna keep this knife for working and I'm, I'm going to keep it on my cutting board, but I'm gonna make sure that the knife is faced away from me. So that means the blade is going um, away from the working area while I'm getting ready so that while I move ingredients around, my hands are in danger of accidentally brushing that knife. And you'll also notice that my cutting board is nice and dry and it's clear. As we're cutting and we're making scraps, you wanna make sure that you keep everything clean and you move things aside so that you can keep your area nice and organized and safe. So I'm going to be showing cutting a potato because you might be making french fries this week. The other recipes I provided are crudite and crudite is just a fancy word for cut up vegetables that you could serve with homemade ranch or homemade hummus or any other dip that you would prefer. Um, but if you're choosing potatoes and you're making french fries, Here's how we cut them at school. First things first, at school, we don't peel them. The peels have lots of fiber, vitamins, and minerals uh, and add some nice texture to our fries. So we're not gonna peel them um, when we're in our classroom. At your home, you have a lot more freedom to decide if you like the peels or not. I will say, if you're going to peel it, you never wanna just hold that potato in your hand and start peeling, because you'll see your fingers here could be in danger of being cut. So when you're peeling, make sure you're peeling away from you so that your fingers are safe and out of the way. But since we're not peeling it, we're gonna leave most of the skin on. Okay, first things first, potatoes are generally round. When you're cutting fruits and vegetables that are round, you wanna make sure you have a flat spot to start. So I'm gonna get my hand that holds the food into a guiding claw, which means all of my fingers and my thumb are pointed back, okay? So basically I'm kind of holding on to this with the tips of my fingernails and the tips of my fingers. This way my fingers aren't sticking out where the blade might be. So once my hands are secure holding my potato, I'm just gonna take one small slice, it's about a half inch thick, off the bottom of the potato. Okay, so to take that slice, you usually start towards the tip of your knife and you go down and forward. The cutting power is actually at the back of your knife. So you don't wanna to try to just cut with the front of your knife. You want to use that whole slicing motion. So once you get this slice off, you can put it aside and you're gonna turn your potato down flat. Now it's much more stable. It's not gonna go flying every, everywhere when you start to work with it. For your french fries, in the picture on the recipe, the french fries are really skinny um, because usually when we make them at school, you guys prefer skinny fries. But you could make fries of any size, even steak fries, which are really thick wedges if you would prefer. It's just that they're going to take a bit longer to cook when you put them in the oven. So to slice your potato, we're gonna go ahead and continue. Get our hand in the claw and our other hand is holding the knife, okay? And you can see here that my hand is wrapped around the handle and my thumb is on the side of the knife, okay? What this allows is for me to have good control. Sometimes I see people put their finger up here 
And you can see as soon as I do that, my finger gets a little white and that's because it's not very good posture for your hands. It's not very ergonomic. So when you hold the knife like this, your thumb on the side, your knuckles, that first knuckles right on top and then they're coming down diagonally and then your fingers wrapping around, you're gonna have a really nice strong grip, okay? If you're holding it way back here on the end or your fingers forward, you're not gonna have very good control, okay? Another thing, a lot of chefs you'll see actually hold the knife itself right here, right just after the handle begins and then you wrap those remaining fingers. This can, for some people, feel a little better and give them more stability, um, but for me, I find that it's a little bit uncomfortable. So I just keep my hand firmly on the handle, okay? My knife's clean and dry. Then I get that guiding hand in and I'm ready to slice. So I'm gonna start making mine about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch thick. And I'm taking my time. Could I go faster? Probably, but my cuts won't be as clean. So when I start my knife, I go forward so that the tip comes down to the cutting board. And then I use my hand and I use the action of this angle like a fulcrum to push down and finish that slice. So there's the third one. I'm gonna get another one. And here you have to decide is this stable enough to cut, okay? If it is, you can go ahead and start your cut. If you feel like this smaller end of the potato is kind of a little precarious or a little concerning, what you can do is kind of pinch over the potato and just start your cut, okay? But then remove your hand. You don't really wanna hold this the whole time you cut because you know your fingers could be in a spot where it would be dangerous for a cut. But you can kind of hold that skinny piece to get started. And then you can see I'm working my cut on the mostly the back part of the knife. And now that it's in, I can just safely put my hand on top and push down. And that will do the last cut that I need for my potatoes. Okay, so to continue on our fries, I'm just gonna do one piece at a time. Take your piece of potato, get your claw, and now we're going to make these into the French fries. In the recipe that I shared online, they simply take these fries, toss them into a bowl with some oil and some salt and some pepper, and then bake them. And you can certainly do that. But there's some good comments, if you scroll down, and a tweak that we actually do in FCS which is instead of putting them right in the oven, we take our fries and we put them into a bowl of cool water. Soaking the fries in cool water for a half hour, you know, up to overnight, lets the water kind of take out some of the starch, which really helps to make our fries crispier. Um, and sometimes people would say cook a little bit faster. I'm not sure if they cook faster, but they definitely do get a little bit crispier with that reduced starch. So you can see with each slice, I'm keeping my fingers curled back and I'm using an elliptical motion, which means I'm going down and forward and then up and back to keep those cuts nice and smooth, okay? Once they are cut, then I'm transferring them right to my bowl of cool water. It doesn't have to have ice cubes in it. If you're only gonna leave it cut for about half an hour, or excuse me, soak for about half an hour, you can leave it right on your countertop. If you're gonna leave it for longer than that, maybe even overnight, you can go ahead, wrap this up and put it in the fridge, okay? Now, this is pretty big potato and I wanna show you a few different cuts. So in this bowl, right, we have the potatoes soaking dry off my hand, and I'll show you a few different cuts on these other pieces. So you know that when we slice, right, we have our fries. The next part, the next smaller cut would be to dice. So when you dice, you turn these matchsticks or these fries, right, the other way, and then you can cut them into equal squares. Now when you dice, you do try to make 
the pieces as even as possible. Same for the fries. When your pieces that you're cut are more even, then they're gonna cook more evenly. Little pieces like this could be um, sauteed in some oil, maybe made into home fries for breakfast. I actually did that the other day when we made a frittata. Okay, next cut, one that you will probably use in the next couple weeks. We will start with a dice, okay? And this is just a rough dice because I'm gonna do it kind of fast. And I'm not worried about these pieces being as equal because, let me move these ones out of the way. What I'm gonna do with these pieces is called a cross, cross chop. And this is how we would cut some herbs, um, some garlic, things that we want to be pretty small. So I can center those up. And then for this one, I'm actually gonna put my hand right on top of the knife. But beware, look at my fingers, my thumb. Everything is up. If you hold your knife like this, it is really, really dangerous. So if you're putting your hand on top of your knife to help stabilize it when you rock it, make sure that all of your fingers and thumb are up. But what I'm just gonna do is cross back and forth over the ingredients on the cutting board, okay? Now, when you do this, the goal is to get them minced, to get them really, really small. So they kind of start to spread out when you start cutting, okay? So once you cut and you think, oh, okay, this is too spread out, I need to push them back together. Don't use your knife, okay? What I do is gently, don't run your hand over along the knife, just push those pieces off down towards the blade, okay? And then put your knife down with the blade away from you and scoot these back together. That way you're not damaging your knife by dragging it across the wooden cutting board or plastic cutting board, whatever you're using. So you can see these are starting to get pretty fine. And depending on what you are cooking, you could just keep on chopping until you're their desired size. Okay, so there are three basic cuts. We have some slices, some dices, some cross chopped or minced pieces. Uh, and that should be a good start for you getting comfortable with knives in the kitchen. Now, I'm gonna clear these away because before we go, we always have to clean up. Clean up is a huge part of our work in the kitchen. And it's good to be cleaning and tidying your messes as we go, okay? When it comes to cleaning knives, we do have to take some special precautions so that you're not cut when you're washing the knife. So, first things first is we never put the knife in the sink, okay? Um, especially at school, we have sinks that we fill with hot sudsy water. If you put a knife in there, it goes under the bubbles, the next person reaches in, feels around, there it is, and they're cut. So usually we leave the knife on the cutting board or you know against the backsplash by the sink until you are ready to wash it. And then the person that washes it is going to use their wash rag or a sponge. And I usually hold the knife in my non-dominant hand because I like to wash with my dominant hand. But what I do is I just fold that washcloth or sponge over the back of the knife and take a few swipes okay in one direction not back and forth just in one direction to get that clean then you can carefully rinse it and use your towel to dry it this way you're not um, endangering yourself when you actually clean the knife and you do want to try to get in the habit of hand washing your knives putting them in the dishwasher uh, it kind of bangs them against the racks and other dishes and can help um, dull them a lot faster than if you take the time to hand wash them so I hope that you make some delicious fries and I'll be back soon with some more videos.